in the Cantonese dialect of China. Great things are done when men and mountains meet. This is not done by jostling in the street. William Blake. In Mandarin, it is known as Tian Ching, or literally translated as to touch the heart. My name is Milena and I work at Amnesty International and I run a project called Amnesty Decoders. Um, Amnesty Decoders aims to create a global network of digital volunteers for Amnesty International to help us with research. So we, we face a problem, like all the world faces this problem of overwhelming of data. So our researchers documenting human rights violations are, are overwhelmed by information. There's streams of video on, on YouTube, there's a lot of social media reports, imi images potentially helping us document these violations around the world uh, but we don't really know what's relevant we don't really know what can really help us with our research um, so facing it, this overwhelming amount of information we are asking digital volunteers from around the world to really help us sift through relevant information from this uh, mountains of of data. So yeah, we just launched the first the first project, um, Amnesty Decoders, and we really think that people will will be able to help us. You know, analyze satellite imagery, sort out messy documents, um, analyze social media reports, validate videos, and so on. So this is incredibly valuable for for our research. Um, it it simply we couldn't do it without it. Um, so we think this this shared uh, shared knowledge that people can bring. We call it the the wisdom. Of of the crowds, you know, like they can they can really help us with this massive research task. Obviously, challenges are are numerous. It's, it's really hard to to get people to dedicate uh, that much time. You have to be very inspiring. We hope to be an inspiring organization fighting against human rights violations uh, around the world. Uh, but building up that community can can take a lot of time. You need you need to be very dedicated to it. You need to constantly uh, give feedback back to your supporters, uh, making sure that they understand where they come in and making sure they indeed bring value to, to your mission and your goals. Uh, but this is really exciting for us um, and, and obviously the, the Wikipedia model is also very inspiring for this purpose. The benefits uh, seem to be uh, obvious to anyone. Um, collaboration, uh, free availability of high quality uh, content and so on. But I'd like to stress one that perhaps people uh, may have less uh, obviously in front of their eyes. And that is a, a, a culture or an ethics, uh, perhaps we, sh we should say an ethos of um, uh, collaboration which has percolated uh, across other initiatives. A kind of ethos that I find uh, particularly uh, inviting and certainly a great uh, contribution by the whole project, which means going way beyond uh, what the encyclopedia has achieved. Some of the challenges are the invisible uh, constraints that collaborative efforts uh, always encounter. When we collaborate and we feel that uh, it's uh, more spontaneous, more bottom-up, that is more uh, up to us, well, some of the constraints that are inevitably there may be less visible. So, for example, in some projects, uh, there is a very uh, highly uh, regarded hierarchy uh, and, uh, and projects are not uh, just simply a matter of uh, getting together and organizing things. So uh, I think one of the challenges is to make sure that what looks like a collaborative effort remains a collaborative effort, but it's also uh, in, uh, in tune with the need for, for structure, for uh, some hierarchy, for uh, some uh, strong organization that makes sure that the whole mechanism works. Perhaps if uh, a, a small suggestion uh, could come from a philosopher uh, in terms of tackling the challenge uh, of um, a hierarchy and a structure that is inevitably and usefully necessarily there uh, would be more transparency. Uh, just a dash of extra uh, information about, for example, how the uh, articles are monitored, uh, what is uh, left to um, software and what is left to human intervention, uh, what it means to uh, validate some transformations, some changes, some new articles, for example. Uh, there's a lot of uh, intervention and inevitable uh, guidance more transparency on that front, I think, will be welcome uh, from everybody. 
After 10 years of academic law solitude in the light, late 90s, uh, we opened the academy that was dedicated to all the artistic disciplines, including music, literature, design, new media, etc. Because for me it was too simple for the people who were meeting there to find a common language. And they were too easily uh, localizing each other. You know, so, okay, you tell me this and this, I know who you are. So somehow to, so easy that they did make an effort to redefine what was the specificity of what they were doing. And including in this uh, group of people, as we did from 2002, uh, scientists and sociologists and uh, people from business and uh, economists and now web designer, for example, uh, the vocabulary everybody is, you, is using is no more given for granted. So they all have to make an effort to come back to uh, the uh, basics of their own work and discipline in order to be understood by other people. And uh, let's say that uh, if it's what uh, Wikipedia has in mind, uh, I would say it's very positive. Uh, but really, when after half a minute of conversation, an artist from India who comes for the first time in solitude and a South American artist who was never in Europe, they find immediately how to localize each other and they find a common vocabulary. Somehow I'm afraid about this. I'm afraid about this unification of the world uh, that is stronger than, than we are. I think that uh, supporting arts means also supporting the production of difference. And uh, so the, the main goal is maintaining differences and uh, uh, somehow helping people to accept and understand differences and let them as it is, as differences. You know, drawing on my own experience with the Wikipedia um, with working with Wikipedia, one of the first questions that I would ask, and speaking here as a South African, somebody based on the continent, and somebody very involved in, by my work with Chimarenga magazine, very involved in questions around um, Africa and, and this place, the place that I work from, the first thing that comes up is, of course, that, that there's not necessarily a shared view of what knowledge is, that knowledge is itself um, determined by by what is determined as knowledge is very different in very very in different contexts so what knowledge is how it is evaluated and how it is used varies wildly so the first thing that that one has to come to is some kind of agreement of what is knowledge and how does it operate within a specific space and what knowledge is actually relevant and meaningful but also how is that knowledge transferred and in our experience, of course, we, our biggest challenges with working with Wikipedia was that the way knowledge was shared didn't work within the Wikipedia's um, philosophy of knowledge. So it was very hard in many cases because the other forms of knowledge on the continent, which is um, rumor, which is general knowledge, which is community-based knowledge, and, the, and much of the history or many things are not as well archived. So to be able to supply a long list of written references that one could put in a bibliography is not always um, possible. But does that disqualify it as knowledge, something, if, if the knowledge has come from people or the knowledge has, is, is available in a community, how then does one evaluate that knowledge and measure it against, say, Western knowledge, which has this huge archive to back it up? So that's, that's the very, very first knowledge, question that one has to ask is what is knowledge, how is it understood in different contexts and spaces, and how is it shared, evaluated, and, and what makes it knowledge? Um, so I think that that's the first challenging question that needs to be asked. The, the second question is what what is a community? And of course, one of the very difficult things is the question of um, can one create communities? 
and around what do you need to create communities. And of course, we had the Wiki Africa initiative, which was lots of energy and I think something of a community was created. But the ability to stay in, sustain that community um, was quite fragile. So my question would be, um, you know, when I look now, many of the updates that were made in the kind of hype of Wiki Africa have remained static and are completely out of date and redundant now because people didn't actually long term buy into being Wikipedian. So my question is, and, and interesting in the context of which you're presenting this um, conference, which is that you are in a small town and a group of people have suddenly come around or together around an event. But will, what are the lasting benefits for the community and what is it that the community benefits by staying involved? So those would be my questions on my, um, and my provocation to, to Wikipedians going forward is that your idea of knowledge might not be my idea of knowledge. I may not have the same ways to evaluate it and how does one grow a community as big as Wikipedia and sustain a sense of community involvement, especially towards people who are more on the periphery or who have less ease of access to that community? Um, yeah, that's it. We live in a historically rare time, one that believes in universal education. And we now have the technology to make them true. To make this a reality requires openness of mind, openness of technology, and an openness to our cultural heritage. Wikipedia has been a beacon and cornerstone on this journey. But it is not easy. Institutions, existing institutions, are not designed to build universal access to all knowledge. They're designed to serve exclusive communities. But this is changing in parts. Uh, we at the Internet Archive have wanted to bring everything written in a language online and available for free. And the first to say yes to this were the Balinese, interestingly enough. So we digitized everything ever written in Balinese. And it's all digitized now. Now we need to make it usable both for the Balinese and for the world. And this is where the Wikipedia community might come in. But the idea of taking whole communities, the deep histories of everything, and making them available on the net it's not what most people are thinking about, but this type of community can think big and get things done. Let's do it together. The greatest benefit to inclusive and shared knowledge? I think it has to be the sense that that knowledge goes into an internet that's there for everyone, on equal footing with everyone else and that each of us should have the ability to write to and read from that internet without much interference from government or business or anyone else. And of course, the greatest challenge is the fear that that's going away if it's not already gone. Uh, I was thinking about a talk I heard Jonathan Rosenberg give about his book, The New Digital Age. He had gone to Myanmar uh, to research, do research for the book, and, and Myanmar had just emerged from a pretty brutal dictatorship, and about 1% of the population had internet access. But what he found as he traveled through the country, that he, even in the most remote sustenance farming village up in the hills, that people had heard of the internet, everyone had heard of the internet, and everyone associated it with a more or less Western ideal of freedom of access to information and civil liberties. Uh, not a dictator's firewall, not a corporation's walled garden, but a free and open internet. And I think that's amazing. And I think that's a real testimony to the foundational vision of the World Wide Web and the internet. We have, what, 3.4 billion people online now, and another 5 billion soon to join us. What kind of an internet is going to be there in four, five, ten years uh, for all of us on Earth? Will we be able to con create and consume in an open and inclusive way? Uh, it could be so, but we've got a lot of work to do.
la più grande sfida è riuscire a far superare gli stereotipi e i pregiudizi che purtroppo molto spesso sono radicati nei confronti di, di tutti, di, di, di culture, di, di popoli, eccetera. E questo può avvenire soltanto attraverso la diffusione corretta di informazioni corrette. E molto spesso le informazioni che vengono divulgate sono strumentalizzate per fini politici o per, fini, per interessi personali di alcuni e quindi molto spesso questo è accompagnato anche da una capacità mediatica superiore eh, alla invece eh, diffusione della conoscenza eh, in, più, più corretta. Eh, e questa è una grande sfida perché eh, non sempre si hanno gli strumenti migliori per farlo, però sono piccoli passi che si devono fare e eh, il, um, lo strumento migliore di diffusione della, del sapere e della conoscenza è attraverso la scuola, banalmente le scuole devono prendersi il grande carico e impegno di far conoscere le tradizioni, le culture e i popoli eh, tra di loro, perché ormai viviamo in un mondo eh, plurale dove tutto è intrecciato e dove non si può più eh, considerare eh, gli altri come altri, come diversi, come lontani da noi. Sicuramente Wikipedia dà l'opportunità di un sapere condiviso, dà l'opportunità di dibattere e di eh, arrivare a un equilibrio della conoscenza e questo è un grande, un grande vantaggio di una grande forza di Wikipedia. Quindi eh, sicuramente a tutto il popolo di Wikipedia che scrive eh, mi sento di dare una raccomandazione eh, che è quella di ricercare sempre le fonti più eh, adatte, più vicine, più consone, più equilibrate eh, rispetto al tema che, che si tratta. Uh, e di portare la pluralità delle visioni e delle, uh, e delle opinioni, perché deve essere data la possibilità di libertà, di pensiero, di parola a tutti e questo lo si fa attraverso la pluralità della rappresentazione delle idee e delle opinioni. Penso che Wikipedia sia veramente molto importante, è una, una grandissima forma di democrazia dove l'utente, sia attivo che passivo, cioè eh, che può solamente leggerlo o anche aggiornarla, eh, possa dare tantissime informazioni e alla portata di tutti. Eh, credo che però ci devono essere grandi controlli perché al tempo stesso ci possa essere eh, un'informazione sbagliata, quindi bisogna eh, andare avanti in questo, in questo modo, cioè aprire il più possibile a più persone. La, la possibilità di conoscere i dati, ma al tempo stesso verificare eh, in modo eh, preciso tutte le informazioni. Il board di Wikipedia è proprio dimostrazione di questa democrazia, perché ha scelto un piccolo comune montano come Esinolario rispetto di candidature come Manila o Atlantic City. From a research perspective, I'm lucky enough to work with some fantastic faculty who've done a great deal of uh, research looking at Wikipedia uh, and trying to understand a little bit more about, if you like, the inequalities in terms of who consumes and who produces knowledge in this context. So for me, certainly one of the, the big challenges looking forwards is finding a more equitable way of uh, having knowledge produced and consumed in Wikipedia. So people like Mark Graham, Heather Ford, uh, other colleagues, Uh, have shown, for example, quite how much knowledge about countries like Africa, uh, other parts of Asia, uh, South America, India, is produced by individuals from outside those regions rather than from the people who live there and who know it best. Secondly, of course, it's also reflected in who consumes information about these regions. So, so certainly for me that's a significant challenge, I think, is to ensure that, if you like, any sort of colonialism in knowledge production and consumption uh, is decreased over the next few years. On a practical level, I actually think there's a great deal more public understanding needed about the role of, 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 of collaborative projects like Wikipedia. Um, you know, from a, from a, from a very sort of a individual personal perspective, I've been enthralled over the last year to know that we have a Wikimedian in residence at the university. Um, but this is actually quite radical, I think, for universities to think beyond traditional means of disseminating our knowledge and our research. And I would certainly like to see this as a much more sort of common uh, activity, to think about how you can uh, move beyond, say, journal publication, writing in newspapers, to actually contributing uh, aspects of research findings 
to uh, obviously something like Wikipedia, which is accessible to anyone, anywhere. Uh, and then last but not least, I guess a sort of really key part for me, I think, of understanding its value is to do much, much more in schools. Uh, I don't know how much many of you know about the way in which media education is carried out in places like the UK, but actually a lot of our kids are taught to be very sceptical uh, of information on the internet, quite rightly. But the examples they're often given are from Wikipedia without any understanding of how you can check, for example, on the, the quality and calibre of information you find therein. So I'd like to see a younger generation who are taught to respect Wikipedia, other forms of collaborative knowledge uh, production, but also, most importantly, to contribute. For me, uh, inclusive and uh, knowledge sharing is uh, really a, a, a best tool uh, to help the people to come together and understand the, uh, uh, whatever the issues and concerns that they uh, are uh, really interested in. Uh, particularly taking from the experience of uh, uh, my own work and the struggles, I feel uh, knowledge sharing uh, that is, uh, is, an, is an important tool that we use always uh, to uh, improve the capacities of the team and then uh, and also the capacities of the union cadre to struggle for their rights. The challenges that uh, we see is that, uh, see, when you go for uh, inclusive uh, uh, and uh, knowledge uh, systems, what happens, it takes a long time where many people have to understand, many people have to come together and understand. There is a process. It it's also depends on between whom you share. You see, if it is equals, uh, it is uh, people who are in the community uh, and their knowledge systems and their practices has to be valued. Generally, what quite often it happens, the scholarly persons always undermine the uh, people and the people's knowledge and systems. When you don't have those kind of things, you don't appreciate the community knowledge systems and all those. So there is no learning process uh, two ways. It is only one way it goes. That is another challenge we see in the community. So manipulations and fabrications can take place when there is a knowledge system, knowledge sharing is taking place between unequals. That is another problem we always uh, uh, takes place because the powerful, knowledgeable persons will misuse their uh, things when they share with others in order to uh, gain for them. This. The technology has its own limitations. It cannot be used by people like in India, informal workers, they are not access to the technology which shares the information, like either computers or the internet and those kind of things. You cannot expect the uh, illiterate workers to really learn from uh, any of those kind of technological kind of things like. Then language is another major uh, barrier. So language and education are in the sense literacy and those kind of things are another uh, challenge uh, for the inclusive uh, uh, sharing. And I feel that, uh, but however, the, as we see the benefits today, uh, by collective sharing of the knowledge, uh, there are a lot of benefits and through which the movements and struggling groups are also, uh, is, it becomes easier to fight for the rights of the people than the earlier times where it is very exclusive knowledge systems only rested with the scholars, people who know the uh, know manipulations in the society. The benefits of shared and inclusive knowledge, well, you'd have to consider the opposite. Would we want knowledge that's exclusive, that excluded uh, insight and wisdom and information because of people that were of different uh, cultures, races, positions, and classes? No, we want everybody to participate in knowledge getting. That's what culture has always been about from the beginning of, hum of, of the human race. Basically, culture builds on the knowledge of all sorts of people to make everything that we know in our world today. Now, I think the idea of shared knowledge is important, so it's not restricted, because that way we can challenge knowledge. We can come up with new ways of thinking about things. In scientific disciplines, that's how it works. People take their knowledge, what they think to be true at a certain time, they share it with their peers, people challenge it, they dispute it, and sometimes you confirm knowledge and sometimes you upend it.
I think the challenge is always allowing for the dissident voices, the disruptive voices, so that you don't get a kind of group think about something that everybody then assumes that this is knowledge and this is what we can take uh, as given, true, uh, and uh, uh, forever, but rather allow for those voices to disrupt, disagree, come up with their own understandings, the new inventions and creations. And again, I think this is how human beings have progressed since the beginning of time. Well, I think, look, Wikipedia is an example of crowdsourcing and, uh, it, you know, it's become very popular methodology in our world today. And, and uh, you know, many people use it. We use it in various disciplines uh, when we are seeking to uh, uh, really employ uh, the vast power of uh, sometimes hundreds, sometimes uh, more people. They could be experts in the field or it could be the general public uh, to provide data, to provide new knowledge, the basis of new knowledge. So I think the methodology is, is certainly an interesting one. Uh, it's been used uh, through time. I think the whole idea of using social media digitally in a very easy and accessible way is what's unique, I think, uh, 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 about something like Wikipedia today. Cybersecurity is essential both for single users and for organizations, enterprises, and government. While technical defenses are important, they have limited effect if they are undermined, albeit unintentionally, uh, by individuals who do not follow security policies, either because they find them inconvenient or because they do not understand why they are necessary. According to various studies, uh, um, there is an alarming cybersecurity awareness gap between those who are in charge of the security measure in the enterprise and those who have to eventually implement and manage them. Cybersecurity, therefore, requires a cooperative effort to tackle all the threats which are the unfortunate byproduct of our interconnected world. It is not much different from public health, if you think about it. One of the reasons why it is important to get vaccines is because people who are infected are more likely to infect others. And the same goes for cybersecurity. Infected devices have a way of infecting other devices and they represent a vulnerability for everyone else. This is why it is crucial to reinforce a culture of cybersecurity through open knowledge and awareness raising. It is about everyone's safety. At the technical level, in fact, cybersecurity is key to the sustainability of our digitally supported economy and society. Considering the importance of computers, technology and data in the contemporary world and the extent to which big, medium and also small enterprises rely on them, it is quite easily understood how the whole economy of a country is at risk if the enterprises are attacked. Indeed, the threats can affect organizations and individuals around the globe at the same time, including compromises of personal data. But this international dimension can be leveraged as well and create opportunities to work together under a shared culture of cybersecurity. The number of stakeholders in this cybersecurity context is huge. Uh, industry, academics, uh, policymakers, uh, institutions, business investors, but also just individuals with an internet connection, like me and you. Understanding the vulnerabilities inherent to our contemporary world and the ways to avoid transforming the opportunities of the internet into risk is crucial. It involves a shared effort in promoting an open knowledge and a shared culture and cooperation on this issue. For this reason, a culture of cybersecurity needs to be put under the spotlight. Security awareness might be difficult to implement and it often encounters resistance from users. But this is why policies of open knowledge and raising awareness about the risk of cybercrime are crucial to increasing security for everyone. And I think we've, we're in the midst of a huge explosion of, first of all, sharing our collective wisdom as groups in, in relatively small groups or even global groups such as Wikipedia. And I think that we're just starting to, to glimpse the huge potential that can occur when we can share knowledge freely and collaborate. But it goes beyond simply surfacing what was otherwise invisible or not expressed. 
I think it also goes to building social connections, uh, what sometimes sociologists call social capital, which we very much need in this age of advanced capitalism when otherwise we're quite separated as individuals. I also think the uh, capacity to share knowledge is allowing us to invigorate democracy, perhaps new forms of democracy than just representative electoral democracy, but new forms of bottom-up participatory democracy uh, often mediated by creative software platforms. So I'm extremely optimistic about the future. Uh, the question will be whether we can overcome some of the impediments that are also arising. A lot of incumbent businesses that have different business models don't really like people to share as commoners. They'd prefer to have a be a gatekeeper or have a proprietary hammerlock on what sorts of innovations can occur. So that's a major challenge of building up an inclusive and shared knowledge. There's also uh, surveillance and censorship and spyware, which governments, the state, are trying to impose because they would prefer that they become, uh, we re remain the centralized control authority and that bottom-up action by commoners uh, not be allowed. So that's a real challenge that uh, we need to address. We've seen such things as uh, the Snowden Papers and, of course, uh, WikiLeaks as attempts to deal with this. But I think we need more structural solutions uh, and more bottom-up vigilance to help deal with the censorship and surveillance issue, as well as these proprietary interventions. I think another issue, however, is trying to develop the cultural culture and identity that makes collective sharing of information the norm and even an ethical imperative. So that too is a challenge going forward and I'm, I'm pleased that uh, groups like Wikipedia are so focused on that and uh, can help us move us forward. I think they're really a, a vanguard major player in helping to explore the potentials of collective uh, knowledge sharing. Well, I think the first thing is that information is power. And the more information people have, the more able they're able to feel um, empowered by it and also able to act with others who feel the same way. I think if you're building network-centric organizations, this enables you to listen and amplify, amplify the voices in society into much wider conversations. It means the creativity is much greater, the innovation is much greater, and the shared experiences create a much better understanding of the kind of world we're living in and also the kind of solutions that we might come up with. Shared knowledge doesn't always mean to say it's the same kind of knowledge. I think the beauty of being more inclusive with people is that we get a much broader and diverser, deeper, wider understanding of the world that we're living in. So it's a real opportunity to provide much more transparency, much more innovation, much more creativity, and to make people feel when they're connecting with others who think the same way that they can actually create change and begin to build a different kind of world. And they know that there's many other people out there that are thinking the same way as them and wanting to do similar things as them. So I think the idea of being more inclusive um, is really, is really empower both empowering for people but also enables a much greater level of change to happen across society. And on the challenges... I actually think the challenges are a real benefit because the biggest challenge is dealing with people with lots of different ideas. But I actually think that's the only way we're going to create ideas and change that are really going to matter and be really driven by people out there. And it means that the ideas that we also have will travel a lot faster. So I don't think there's really a challenge in being more inclusive or sharing more knowledge. I think it's actually a huge benefit. You just have to deal with a much bigger diversity of ideas, which if you can get through that, you will actually find that the ideas that work on the ground are much more sustainable and much more workable.
Io ho scritto un libro uh, che uh, con mia sorpresa è stato letto uh, uh, da moltissime persone nel mondo e eh, direi che eh, la riflessione che posso fare è, è a posteriori eh, perché ha funzionato perché le persone si sono interessate ehm, a eh, leggere questo libro che parla di fisica teorica in tante anche se eh, diciamo in molte di più di quante eh, si interesserebbero di fisica eh, di per loro e credo che una delle risposte sia questa Um, molta divulgazione scientifica è scritta eh, per persone appassionate, per chi eh, è curioso di sapere tanto, di sapere di più eh, su un argomento, sulla fisica per esempio. Eh, il, il libro che ho scritto non è scritto per queste persone, è scritto per chi eh, a priori non ha un interesse in fisica e l'idea centrale era è stata quella del libro di ogni argomento di dire solo una cosa centrale e importante, senza semplificare nel senso di dire cose inesatte, semplificando nel senso di andare uh, di esprimere il, il punto centrale della cosa, dell'idea. E penso che questo, uh, questa è l'idea utile che ha funzionato per il libro e è importante. E in fondo, uh, come dire, è l'idea dell'enciclopedia stessa, no? nel, 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 nel Settecento l'enciclopedia con l'illuminismo nel XVIII secolo ha cambiato il mondo, c'è un sapere, l'umanità è un sapere, un sapere vasto, diffuso, eh, è possibile prendere eh, all'interno di un ambito di sapere le idee centrali e comunicarle in maniera che siano eh, eh, comprensibili a tutti. In fondo Wikipedia fa questo, mi sembra, in maniera efficace, sta mostrando che lo si può fare. Uh, most of the, the, the platforms for shared knowledge these days, uh, they don't have mechanisms uh, that would allow people that live in poverty and people that are excluded uh, to be actively empowered uh, to, to be developing and, uh, and sharing the knowledge from their perspective. Uh, so you have very democratic platforms that everybody can add to. Uh, however, people living in exclusion, uh, uh, they have to be proactively involved uh, on that. So for me, the main challenge is how we overcome that power inequity uh, on access to technology uh, and also access to such platforms in a way that uh, excluded groups that have very important process of local knowledge generation uh, to also uh, be part of such platforms. Uh, and to bring this bottom-up uh, knowledge development uh, to the fore. If we start doing such process in a more consistent way, I think uh, we have a fundamental democratization of knowledge development. Uh, and you also have uh, a process in which you change the power equation. Uh, the knowledge of people living in poverty and exclusion uh, gets valued, uh, gets understood, uh, but more importantly, the knowledge that one community has developed to deal with its own situation of poverty and, uh, and inequality can be used by another community in a similar situation. Uh, so therefore, uh, you can have a much faster uh, knowledge curve, if you want, uh, through which different communities across the world uh, can learn from each other and can advance the struggles for rights uh, and the alternatives, the local alternatives, in a much faster pace. Uh, so I believe that benefit would be crucial. Uh, on top of uh, the overall change on power, because we all know that knowledge is power, uh, and having uh, poor people and poor communities owning their knowledge uh, and sharing that is a value in itself. As you may know, um, knowledge is power. And um, nowadays, we are in a, a kind of society where, here in Cameroon specifically, where, um, where uh, knowledge is kept by some people, and no one, know, no one wants 
to share knowledge, the government, the power that they want. So uh, it's very important to have some tools to share all kinds of knowledge uh, for people and to, to uh, applaud their uh, ability to become, to act uh, with consciousness. Through our experience, we saw that uh, kids, most of them were involved in our project, were really proud to have some knowledge and to share the knowledge we transmit uh, to other people. And uh, now uh, it's quite, it's very interesting because it's completely independent from us. Then um, the, the kids are able to speak with their parents, they're able to speak with their teachers, they're able to speak with their friends, uh, not about sport, not about football, or about uh, the, the, the good um, car someone has, but about um, something uh, on the heritage, for example, and uh, they can share it, and they know that they are part of some 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 trajectory in history. Uh, another one is about water, water in the city. We have uh, involved uh, uh, some kids, well, youth, um, in collecting uh, data in their own neighborhoods, and uh, they had. Uh, in that experience of collecting uh, data, um, better knowledge of um, who is the neighbor, their neighbor, how they live, what kind of difficulties they have, and they had, uh, they, they kept uh, a very good uh, idea of their um, uh, poverty and the, with data, you know. And now they're really aware of um, uh, the way they live the way all of them live in the neighborhoods and how they can try to change or to ask for uh, changes uh, to uh, improve their uh, environment and uh, their uh, facilities. It is obviously much better to make an architecture and urban design that's participatory. There's been a lot of critique on, let's say, the do-it-yourself um, uh, process of making city, but I am absolutely a believer in it. Why? Because we need to make a collective city. We need the city to be more democratic. Um, we have to learn from buildings. There are too many buildings and urban plans now in the city, in cities around the world, from China to North America, that are showing us that we have learned nothing from history. Buildings that are all glass, for instance, that now have incredible solar um, uh, expenditures, and uh, and they need to uh, replace the glass with wood shutters and shading. For instance, as in the Paris Library, La Bibliothèque Nationale de Paris is a big mistake. And now that building is not functioning because it gets too hot and the books are burning. We have history from Pessac, Le Corbusier, making housing, a workers' housing in Pessac, that when it was inhabited till now, since the 20s till today, the houses have been transformed. Sheds have been added. Little gardens have been added. Solar shading has been added, new rooms have been added, and no one was asked how the workers wanted to live. It, so often architects are imposing themselves with icon architecture or with an idea of how people should live without really even participating with the people who are supposed to use it, the users. So we need a more user-driven architecture and planning. Uh, there are many challenges to do participatory design work. Uh, the biggest challenge, let's say, is to get all four actors to the table. You need the city uh, representatives, you need the university where the knowledge is, you need the on-the-ground NGOs uh, who are helping to do the interface between the city and the community, and you need the community at the table. The architect would function somewhat like the glue. He would sit in the middle because he has a quite good knowledge of a diverse number of things, and he would be the one who could bring all parties together in the production of a more equitable city.
Intanto complimenti ad Esino e ai suoi abitanti per la bella iniziativa che sono riusciti a cogliere. Un'iniziativa che si apre al mondo e non è casuale che oggi ci troviamo proprio nel campus del Politecnico del CNR a Lecco dove una parte di questa esperienza si sta realizzando con la presenza di molti studenti di ogni parte del mondo che frequentano questa università insieme agli studenti italiani. La ricerca che qui si fa è un altro tassello importante che lega due grandi strutture come il Politecnico di Milano e il CNR, Centro di Ricerca Nazionale e credo che questo sia anche un sintomo di una voglia di stare insieme, di creare sinergie, di fare in modo che tutti i risultati possano esaltarsi con la combinazione dei saperi che da ogni parte provengono. Quindi ad Esino e alla vostra iniziativa i migliori auguri e la sicurezza che il risultato sarà ottimo.